So you may have seen our earlier video looking at the portrayal of Piat in the 1978 classic A Bridge Too Far. If not, check it out. When I think of Richard Attenborough's all-star war epic telling the story of Operation Market Garden, I immediately think of the iconic Bring Up the Piat scene, where Anthony Hopkins playing Colonel John Frost calls for the projector infantry anti-tank to take out a marauding panther. But this isn't the only scene from the film depicting the Piat. In this video, we'll take a look at a couple of other scenes showing the Piat in action. We first see the Piat during the scene when the Guards Armoured Division's spearhead meets heavy German resistance. Michael Caine's Shermans are getting a pasting from some Pac 40s. The British infantry deploys, and we see a cornucopia of kit ranging from Brens to Vickers to an M2 Browning. But blink and you'll miss them. A pair of Piat teams also bring up the Piat. A two man team can be seen moving forward the number one carrying the Piat, and the number two carrying the three round bomb carrier. But sadly, they're killed by enemy fire, and it's close air support which silences the Pac 40s. The second scene, in which we see the Piat finally get to work on some German armoured fighting vehicles, is during Gravener's attack over the bridge. As the paras at the bridge prepare for the attack, we see two or three Piat positions getting ready and loading bombs into their bomb support trays. And one Piat number one can be seen slotting the rear of the bomb into the projectile guide plates to hold the bomb in place. Very authentic. As the column crosses the bridge, Frost orders his men to open fire. Brens, Stens, Rifle Number 4s and Piats open up and the column is stopped in its tracks. During the scene we see a number of Piats fire and knock out SS vehicles. One Piat Number 2 is hit by enemy fire. The first Piat round fired hits a lead German vehicle, causing it to halt. The second flips a Kubelwagen and then we see a Number 2 load a fresh bomb into the bomb support tray, with a tap to make sure it's properly in place. We get a great shot of the Piat firing from the front, and it's worth noting that the Piat doesn't recock and the spigot is still seen in the tray, just before the camera cuts away. This means that the Piat number one will have to manually recock the weapon before he can fire again. It's worth remembering that without the bring up the Piat scene, making a point of naming the weapon, most people would never have known that it was this unusual weapon that dealt so much damage in the earlier scene. Of course, the attack across the bridge was not only broken up by Piats, there were also airborne anti-tank guns, which the film doesn't show. Another little tidbit of information I learned since the first Bring Up The Piat video, thanks to my friend Robbie of RM Military History, check out his channel if you haven't already, is that the Piat was fired in most of these scenes by one of the film's armourers, Bill Islemore. The information comes from the After the Battle, the Battle of Arnhem war film, A Bridge Too Far, which describes him as a former sergeant of the 50th Regiment, which might be a reference to the Queen's own Royal West Kent Regiment. The book goes on to say, Islemore excelled himself during the filming of the battle on the bridge by being the ace shot with the Piat. During all the various takes, he was able to put the bomb exactly where the director wanted it and where it coincided with the special effects explosions. So I suppose we could take that as not only a testament to Islemore's shooting, but also to the Piat's accuracy. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't seen the others in the series looking at the Piat depicted in film, check out the Bring Up the Piat playlist linked here. Thanks again for watching, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. If you'd like a copy of my book on the Piat, you can pick one up over at historicalfirearms.info.